Hey guys, what's up? This is B coming to you from Guns and Accessories today. So today I want to do a little bit of a review and just talk about some thoughts that I have about this Nikon 3 to 9 by 40 their Pro Staff Rimfire Scope. Okay, so this is the Rimfire 3 to 9 by 40 matte BDC 150. So let's talk about all of those numbers first and what what do they mean if you don't if you're not familiar with this. So 3 to 9 is the zoom levels. So this tells you that it's not a fixed zoom that you can that you can zoom in and out like you would on a camera. The 40 is talking about how big the 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 objective lens is on this thing. The lens on the the end of the scope that's closest to the muzzle. Okay, the well the matte is just the finish on the actual scope. BDC is stands for bullet drop compensator or compensation. Okay, so first the 3 to 9 as I said is the zoom level and right here is your zoom ring. And this thing is pretty tight. It's not going to just accidentally start moving on you. You're going to have to you're going to have to really give some torque to this to be able to zoom. But you can see right there that's the closest that it's going to be at a level zoom of three. Then you zoom to four, to five, to six, all the way out to nine. And nine is going to be zoomed in the furthest so that you can see out further. Okay, the 40 refers to the objective lens, this lens out here. Of course, you want to be careful not to touch that or scratch it or do, do your best to keep that lens clean. So if it does get dirty, you need to be careful with what you clean it with. You don't need to just use any anything that you have. You need to use use types of, of material that are going to work good with with lenses. And so you can find you can find kits for cleaning camera lenses or or scope lenses, but just don't just use anything to clean that because you will scratch that up if you do that. But the 40 refers to the objective lens, how big this is. And that's relatively large. I mean, they do they do get bigger, 50 millimeters, and um, even a little bit bigger than that. But they go they go down to quite a bit. So this is relatively large. So this thing can capture quite a bit of, of light. Okay, and I'll just say this real quick. This isn't part of the scope, but th these rings do not come with the scope. When you buy this scope, you only get the scope. These are just some cheap rings I got off of Amazon. These are the UT, UTG medium rise rings. And I know guys have lots of questions about that, but that's what I'm running right here is just the medium UTG rings. And with these rings, this scope, I have it, I had it mounted to my Smith and Wesson MMP 1522. And with these rings, there's barely, barely any clearance. Really, there's not even enough clearance to get the, the lens caps on there with that, but it does clear, but, but just by a little bit. Okay, next I want to talk about Nikon just in general for a second. Nikon is a is a very good company and make very high quality optics. My wife is a hobby photographer and she started off with this Nikon D90. And I've got this Nikon 35mm lens on here right now. And that thing, this little thing is an awesome little lens. All right, and then she moved up into this Nikon D700. This is a this is an incredible camera, full frame sensor. Um, there's better, but but this thing is definitely a sweet camera. But this lens that she has on here right now, let me just take this off. This 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. This is a cheap lens. You can get this thing for around a hundred dollars, probably a hundred to hundred and fifty bucks for this thing, and it doesn't cost much. But my wife has made a whole bunch of money from this one fifty millimeter lens, and my point here is that you know Nikon makes good, high quality stuff, and uh, you know I kind of view this lens kind of in the same light that I view this right here. This thing is cheap. She's made a whole lot of money off of this. This thing is relatively cheap and you can make a whole lot of good shots from this thing also. Okay, next let's talk about the adjustments. Your turrets have these plastic caps on there. 
So here you have your uh, windage adjustment, and here you have your elevation adjustment. You'll notice this says a quarter inch at 50 yards. So that's half an inch at 100 yards. And on this, okay, I'm going to have to re-zero this, so it's not going to matter, but when you, when you adjust this, one click equals a quarter inch at 50 yards. Once you get it set to where it needs to be, you can lift this up and then re-zero it and let it back down at zero. Then from there... Alright, so when I pick it up here and let it back down, then it re-zeroes. Same thing up here. Okay, next, this thing has a one inch tube diameter. So when you're getting rings, make sure you get rings that are made for a one inch tube diameter. All right, I just want to get some good close-ups of this for you now. And like it said in the description on the box there, it has a matte finish. So it's not real shiny. You can tell how it's kind of muted. Looks really nice on my rifle. Okay, next I'm going to just kind of give you a little bit of a video of me out on the range showing you kind of what it looks like to actually look through the scope so you can see the reticle and see what it looks like. Um, where, where I was at when I was recording this was right at 50 yards and so that, that's, that's where I was, was sitting at with that and I'm going to let you kind of look down the scope there and so you can kind of see what that reticle looks like. Okay, and so this is my target of me sighting in here, and, and some of this was just pure at the very beginning of the sighting, so some of these are all over the place. But this was kind of the last group that I shot, and I didn't really have a whole lot of time to be able to get to, to spend checking accuracy after that. But this was at 100 yards right here, and I pulled this one, and so each one of these is an inch. So you can see right there, that's about an inch and three quarters or so, inch and five eighths, whatever. So that's going to be the, the, the biggest distance there. And like I said, this was mounted to my Smith & Wesson MP 1522, which is a good rifle and an accurate rifle, but it's not going to be the most accurate rifle you can get. So, And I was shooting CCI standard velocity with this, which is a pretty accurate round, but it's still not target or you know match grade stuff. So... I feel like with, with the rifle, ammunition, scope, I think that's about as good as I'm going to be able to coax out of that combination. The next thing I want to talk about is this, is the Spot On Optimized. Spot On is Nikon's software program that helps you to know where to hold this BDC reticle given any particular different type of bullet or any type of different load that you're shooting. So, for instance, let's say, of course, since we're talking about rimfire here, you might be shooting M22. 
So you can go to, to Nikon's website and they have this as well, but I'm going to just show this to you on my Android phone. I have the Verizon Galaxy Note 3. This program is not free. It cost me five bucks. So, you know, that, that's not, not real cheap, but it is a pretty neat program. So if you go to this spot on program, And you can set the different type of scope that you have. So this program works for all their different BDC reticle scopes. And they have all kinds here. But down closer down to the bottom is their Pro Staff Rimfire. And we're talking about the 3 by 9 by 40 So you set your particular scope. Then you set your caliber ammo. Now for this rifle, basically these are going to be the main three. Your 22 LR. 22 Magnum or, 20, or 17 HMR. Those are going to be kind of the, the main three that you're going to want to use with this rifle. So I'm talking about 22 here. Okay. Winchester. And then find the ammo and the bullet. And this M22. Okay. The M22 load is right down here at the bottom. 40 grain M22 plated lead round nose. 1,255 feet per second. Okay? So, once you click on that, now it's got all the information set for your scope, for your caliber. So we're going to apply that. Now the other thing is, is you can put in atmospheric conditions here. And this get current conditions has never worked for me. I mean, I've got my GPS set on my phone. It's never worked for me. So I don't know if that's just something that doesn't work in their program at all, but, um, it, it hasn't worked for me. So you'll have to enter your own information here. I'm about 3,500 feet, um, from sea level. And then you can put your temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, wind speed, and then wind direction. Now the wind direction actually points at so if you're facing you're facing your target at north okay so let's say you're facing say you're facing that way if the wind is blowing out of this direction you'll want to set this to be at that direction right there if the wind's blowing that at that way you want to point at the way it's blowing so Basically, you point the arrow at the direction that the wind's blowing at you. And so this will compensate for the wind blowing at this direction. So then once that's applied, then you can tell it here wind drift units. You can tell it if you want it to drift it in inches, MOA, or clicks. And then show it on the reticle. I'll just do that just to show you. So you apply this. Oops. So you apply that. So everything is set now. We've got our atmospheric condition set. We have the particular scope. We have the specific type of ammo that we're shooting. And then we push fire. And then right there you can see. Oh, and they've got a zero at 200. That's not realistic. Yeah, we want... We want our zero distance to be 50. Okay, so with it being zeroed in at 50 yards, at the first dot there, at the first circle, is 62 yards. At the second circle is 86 yards. At the third one is 104. At the fourth one is 132. And then at the top of the post is at 159 yards. And once you get to 159 yards, yeah, you're going to be really, really stretching, especially since we're talking about rim fire here. All right. Let's say I was going to shoot some CCI mini mags, just this 40 grain round nose stuff, 1,235 feet per second. All right. So I'd go back, select caliber ammo. This time I want CCI. Find the particular ammo. Okay, we're looking for the 40 grain mini mag, the 1235. Apply that. 
And you can see for that particular one, it's just a little bit different than, than the M22 was. I think that first one on the M22 is 62. This is 61, 84, 102, 131 at the fourth one, and 156 at the top of that post. Now, I understand all this is is theoretical. If you're out hunting squirrels, you're not going to stop and, and look this up. You're just not going to do that. You're going to need to know where this is at. But say you're out groundhog hunting, where you can where you can set up in a particular place, and you have these, these groundhogs jumping up at different places, Again, you're going to have to be pretty quick. So this still probably lose a little, well, it does lose practicality whenever you're talking about that. But this gives you, just gives you an idea of, of what's happening for each particular one. All right, another thing I want to talk about real quick. This is a Rimfire Scope 22LR. This scope is developed for Rimfire. It's developed to shoot 22LR, 22 Magnum, 17 HMR. I see people on the Amazon reviews a lot of times for this scope asking, would this work on my, my AR-15? And the answer is, yes, it will work, but it's not going to be optimal. There are a lot of better options. And so um, I, this just is not going to be your best option for an AR-15. So, you know, there you can go on and you can look for like Nikon's P223, which is a 3x9x40. By by or their step up from that, the M223, which is a 3 to 12 by 42. That's a, a very nice scope. But that, that P223, kind of the lower of those two, is around $150, $175, somewhere around there. That scope is going to serve you a whole lot better than this scope right here. Because that BDC is made for, for rimfire. And again, this is made to stretch out to 150 yards, where those... Those other BDCs are made for 600 yards. This is not your best option for for larger center fire calibers. This is a rim fire scope. All right. And so while I'm talking about the reviews there on Amazon, let's just look at that website for just a second and uh, just kind of show you the the general price and some of the reviews on this thing. So right now it looks like 150 is the cheapest. Well, it looks like maybe 135, but somewhere around there. I bought mine on Amazon on sale for $88. If you watch, you can probably find it on sale every once in a while. You're going to have to keep an eye out for that thing. 150 is where it's at right now. I bought mine for 88. I imagine most of the time, if you're looking at all within a day or two span, you can probably find it for 100, 125 bucks. So very, very good price for this thing. The other thing is the reviews on this. So Amazon's a, a good place for me to go to look at reviews because it's such a large website. There are lots and lots of people that come here. You're not just getting one or two reviews. You're getting a whole bunch of reviews. And, you know, that's one thing that, that, uh, that, that people do a lot of times where they make a mistake. Like, say they're buying a new washer and dryer, and they just ask their friends, well, what, you know, what washer and dryer do you have, and did you like it? Well, when you just ask one person, you're asking one sample, and, you know, whenever you want to really know how something performs, you need to have more than one in your sample size. You need to increase that to 50 or 100 or 500 to have a good sample size so that you get a, a really good idea. Because if you just choose from one, they may have gotten a lemon or they may have gotten one that was tip top shape of what it should have been. And you don't really get a good idea. It's whenever you look at it in numbers is when you can get a really good idea. So when you go over here to Amazon, for this particular rifle, they have right now they have about 226 customer reviews. And you can see that thing, to me it looks like it's pegged out to 5. So if we scroll down here to the star distribution, right now it says 208, 5, there's 13, 4, 3, or 3, 3 stars, and 2, 1 stars. And from, from what I've looked at in reviews, they always tell you throw out the most glowing reviews and throw out the most critical reviews and look at the ones in the middle. And well, if you throw out the most critical, you're probably going to throw out those bottom two. You're going to throw out some of the top ones, but still that's going to put 95% of the reviews in the five star category. And so to me, there's kind of safety in numbers as far as that's concerned.
Okay, next thing. This thing has a 50-yard fixed parallax. So what parallax is, is it's actually the, a description of an error. A parallax, when you say parallax, you're really talking about a specific type of error. And what it is, is, is it's whenever you're looking through your scope and if your target is not at the pair at the at the focus distance like on this if it's not at 50 yards let's say you're you're looking through this rifle at something that's 100 yards down down range from you where your reticle is at in relationship to to the target is going to be swimming around without you even moving the rifle or the scope at all with you moving your head that that reticle is going to move around and it's going to it's going to uh, give a little bit of error in where that where it actually impacts so this has a 50 yard fixed parallax so that means at 50 yards there's not going to be that error you're not going to have the reticle moving at all as you just move your head so anything past that 50 yards you know, once you get out to 100 yards, you're going to start seeing a little bit of swim into that reticle as you move your head. Okay, the eye relief on this is about 3.6 to 3.9 inches, somewhere around there. And it, it's fairly forgiving, not, not a whole lot. But what eye relief means is how far your eye needs to be to this lens so that it's not like tunnel or it's not, it's not way out. It's where you're at the sweet spot. So when you mount this on your rifle, you're going to want to be able to get your head about 3.6 to 4 inches away from this so that you can get in the sweet spot of being able to see, uh, see the reticle and see everything downrange very clearly. Okay, with the large bell on this, this large objective lens, this thing gathers light very well. And, you know, some, some scopes that have a very small objective lens, small bell on them, Whenever it starts getting close to dusk, you just can't see anything. With this one, with, with this, it's able to gather more light and you're able to see closer to dusk or, you know, uh, closer to dawn. So this is a relatively good low light scope. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to weigh this for you real quick. And yeah, I've got the rings on here, but you're going to have to have rings on there. So yeah, that's going to add a little bit of weight, not a whole lot. But you can see you're right there. It's, and I know I'm kind of at a weird angle here, but it's about one, one pound, two ounces, somewhere in that neighborhood is what this is going to add to your rifle. Just a little over a pound. So the two main small downfalls of this scope are going to be number one, that it only has quarter inch click at 50 yards, half inch at 100 yards. But since we're talking about rimfire, that's really not that big of a deal. And then the other main main little problem with this is that it has a 50 yard fixed focus that there's not an AO there's not an adjustable objective and you know again that that's one of those things where it's just a rim fire so it's probably not not that big of a deal but those are kind of the two two little problems that this thing has which really are, are not that big of a problem okay so the Nikon Pro Staff rim fire 3 to 9 by 40 BDC 150 this is a very, very nice scope for the price. If you're looking at scopes in the $50 to $60 range, you're, you're probably going to be better to bump up to this. Um, you know, if you have the money to buy some of the more expensive, some loopholes or, or some of those other one, other scopes, then, then buy those. But, you know, if, if, if you're in the $50 to $60 range, you're probably better off to save $20 or $30 more dollars and to get this thing. This is an excellent scope good low light capability very clear optics just a well-made scope from a very respected company this is an awesome scope